Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Pixels Get Me live over at Mixer.com. Uh, we're doing a podcast tonight. This is episode six. We're going to be talking about uh, some gaming news, some tech news, and a little bit of new media stuff like uh, Netflix and Mixer and TwitchCon type announcements. Um, we, we've got Curbs with us, uh, but hold, hold on, hold on, man, Curbs. He's like, he's he's going crazy in chat. Um, but uh, what we've got tonight for you is. Um, we're going to be talking about, uh, specifically on the gaming side, we're going to be talking about Game Pass and changes that are coming to that. We're going to be talking also about uh, Oculus Rift, the guys who uh, who were bought by Facebook. One of their uh, leaders is leaving Facebook. And then also a couple other things regarding uh, the new media stuff. So, uh, tonight we have with us on the panel, um, I'm going to start with Elusive Elite. Uh, Elite, you there? Yep. I'm here. Right, cool, man. Do you mind telling everyone a little bit about yourself, what you're doing here, and all that good stuff? Sure thing. Hi, everybody. I'm the Elusive Elite, and if you can't already tell by my name, I'm a big fan of Halo. Well, at least the you know classic Halo. Uh, and um, ever since I played Halo 3, I've always been in love with the Elites, so that's what I centered my community around, uh, the Elites and the Covenant. And uh, I'm a variety streamer here on Mixer. I play anywhere from like Master Chief Collection to various other games like Division. I have uh, Throwback Thursdays where we play old games, mostly Nintendo GameCube games. And yeah, that's about it for me. Cool. Thanks so much for the uh, for the intro, man. Yeah, I saw you earlier on stream uh, with your community night. Uh, you had a plasma sword with you, yeah? Yeah. It was, it was, I, I think it was, you were playing it like a guitar, which is awesome. I mean, no, I don't actually play guitar. <laughs> it was just air guitar yeah, or it's sword air, guitar. Yeah, but. it's air air plasma sword. I love it. Good stuff, dude. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, Elusive Elite is a uh, is a streamer with the Breath of Variety stream team that we're members of. Um, so thanks again for for coming down with us, and then we'll uh, we'll probably see each other again maybe on the Breath of Variety podcast that they're trying to start up too. So that's kind of cool. Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I... No, no, it's good. Um, <laughs> so so besides that, um, we also have. Uh, I think I'm going to go next with E Monster 808. Iman, you here? Yeah, I'm here, man. Always and every 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 Friday, <laughs> and nearly almost every day because you're awesome like that. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I know, I know. I, so, try, I try. So, I what do you, you man. what are you up to? What you been playing lately? Uh, I've been playing some Black Black Desert lately, and I'm looking at playing some Disgaea. Some what? Uh, it's a game that's coming out on Switch. I think it is. Is it on Switch? Yeah, it's it's out on Switch. But what was the game title again? Uh, Disgaea. Oh, Disgaea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Awesome. Let me know how that is, because I got the Switch too. We're going to be kind of transitioning the channel into a little bit more Switch content. So, you know, let me know. Let me know what Switch. you think. Remember, I don't have a Switch. I know, I know, I know. I hear you. <laughs> All right. Um, who else we got? We got Zero, Zero Infinity. Are you here? Yep, I'm here. I'm Zero Infinity 07. I'm a streamer on Mix, also part of the Breath of Variety stream team. Um, haven't been streaming a whole lot lately. Just got a whole lot of real life stuff going on. But I've been playing Warframe the past couple of weeks, and actually played a little bit of Diablo tonight, actually. Cool, cool. Um, what's your uh, What's your mixer link? Um, mixer slash zero infinity oh seven. All right, cool. All right, um, and then finally, we also this is our fifth. We were trying the first time ever with five people on the roundtable. So uh, fifth person is Curbs. Curbs, what you got, man? Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm constantly on the Pixels Get Me podcast, it's because Pixels loves me. And uh, it's gonna, it'll be wonderful to spend this night. Mm. <laughs> and that if was... you like the sexy background music, well, I just Googled that like five minutes ago. So we're doing good. <laughs> All right, awesome, dude. Um, that was kind of like like a little Deadpool channeling there, right? From that from definitely, that first definitely. from that first trailer, you remember that where he's all like, "Hi there, 
Yeah, a little is that, bit. Is that he wore his brown pants. All right, cool. Oh, I came oh. up with this bit like 15 minutes before the stream, and I just goofed everything. Hey, dude, we are we are your platform for your bits, dude. You keep bringing the bits, and you'll keep coming back, okay? Okay. Hey, Pixels, before we start, I just want to let you know, uh, today we're having a bit of a house party over here, and you're on the protector. Everybody's all chilling out watching your stream tonight. Yeah, no pressure. Thanks so much, dude. I appreciate that. Could you, like, so, put it... So, so could you put it... the audience, buddy. We have hide the audience. Could you maybe put it, like, outside, project it onto the garage, and just kind of bring the whole community around? We'll I mean, just make I this crazy. Too, if you want. Right. I can take it maybe, outside. Maybe next time. Building. Maybe next time. Cool. Well, next hello, week, hello sure. everybody no in Iman's living room. How's everyone doing tonight? Right, Odo says hi from the guild. Uh, Firebird <laughs> also says hi. Nice, nice. And right. uh, Dizzy13 says hi. <laughs> hello, hello, and hello. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's get into the news, guys. So there's a couple uh, there's a couple Game Pass articles. I found one, and then uh, Elite found one. So um, let's start with the one that Elite found. Basically, there's this uh, you know nice little survey study from New Zoo. Um, they uh, they found that the uh the people who are typically subscribing to uh i'm sorry the more likely people to subscribe to an xbox game pass are families so that, that's kind of interesting to me because then it seems like um they're gonna keep providing more and more like family friendly content and that's something that's that's kind of lacking um when we're talking about like the big triple a titles typically it isn't like a family friendly type deal so uh Triple A titles typically don't make it to Game Pass right away, but we've seen Xbox starting to do that more and more as well, just trying to get a reason to get the Game Pass for that month. So they let like one pretty decent Triple A title less than a month old roll into Game Pass. Um, but yeah, so uh, so I'm going to pitch this over to uh, Elite. What are you thinking, man? Oh, I'm thinking you. I, I, I might. I mean, this might be a little controversial, but I'm actually thinking that because of this, that Xbox should have had this from like day one for the Xbox One. And the reason I say that is because you know how like the marketing pitch was, you know, the all-in-one console. It would be, you know, the, you know, the thing that would be in every family's living room. The living room replacement for whatever else device you needed. Yes, that was yeah, the plan. Yeah, exactly. And so with the numbers here, I mean, it's it seems like, seems like, even though it's a few years down the road, it seems like. Xbox is finally starting to uh, get what they're trying to do, or at least tried to do with the Xbox One marketing. Yeah, there was another. There's another part with that. Like the Game Pass is is a software as a service, right? But but Microsoft is also moving into platform as a service because I don't know if you saw the recent um, the recent deal that you could get an Xbox. I mean, I'm not even an Xbox person, and I almost jumped on this. Basically, you can go to a Microsoft store and you can get Dell financing, which is the equivalent of like a Verizon cell phone credit check. I mean, we're talking a minimal amount of credit needed to pull this off where you can get a Xbox One X Game Pass and uh, and gold for two years, two year Game Pass, two year gold and an Xbox for two years. And it pays itself off in thirty five dollars a month. So like that's completely game changing as well but i think that the success of the game pass really showed them that that platform is a service where people don't have to shell off five hundred dollars for an xbox anymore everything's just coming more and more to a monthly payment it's kind of like what the especially the american economy is moving toward everything is just well you can just subscribe and save you know even amazon does subscribe and save getting getting groceries or, or random stuff you know you just get a little bit cheaper if you just pay a monthly fee um, what are you guys thinking? Let's go. Let's go around. Anyone got anything on that? Well, I do. I have a little something. On. All right, go ahead, man. Well, uh, Elite's right though. It is moving forward in in a better direction that they're actually planning for it from the beginning. Glad to see they're finally going to hit that. Uh, another thing is some of those uh, Game Pass games they are crossplay, so you can actually download them and play it on your PC as well. Man, Iman, you're like the master of Segway. <laughs> what am I doing now? You just you just did as perfect, dude, because Microsoft is bringing all you can play Game Pass subscription to PC. That's our next article, dude. Like, how did you do that? How did you do that? Did you do that on purpose? 
<laughs> no, no, it's just that was talking beautiful. about the actual Game Pass. Like, you know, yeah, like that was beautiful. Some of the most of the games that they well, at least one or two games on each each month's Game Pass is cross. Right. So I mean, it allows you to play it on your PC as well as on your Xbox. So, I mean, they're going in the right direction where they're trying to, you know, make things crossplay and they're pushing crossplay. Yeah, so they're really trying to promote this play anywhere initiative that they're talking about in this article. This is the second article from Ars Technica, basically saying Microsoft's bring all you can play Game Pass subscription to PC. I'm not sure if the price is going to be different. I don't know if the game lineup is going to be a little different, but um, but since it's coming to PC, I mean, really, they're kind of going after, um, you know, Humble Bundle and a couple other PCs. Like, we don't really have, I guess we have EA access, but I uh, guess the consoles have that too. Yeah, but nobody uses them. I know, yeah, I know, no, I know. Yeah. That's correct. Well, uh, one thing, if, if it's, okay, if I interject. Go uh, for it, man. Is that one, th- one thing that one thing is interesting is that this announcement comes like just after Discord uh, announced that they're or and released their online store and how it or because like Discord Nitro used to be like I think what seven eight bucks a month right and with the launch of their store they now have two versions. One of them is like the basic nitro where you you know you just have all the benefits that nitro had and they reduced it to five bucks but then they allowed basically what's like game pass mm-hmm. uh, for ten dollars a month on discord right. and so it's it's basically like the discord store is like steam but it also has like the monthly subscription and access to hundreds of games like game pass so i wonder if this is like Maybe like a power play that Microsoft's trying to like get into, because they don't want to. They don't want to have like Discord taking up all the PC players and not being able to get a market in that. Yeah, bringing up uh, Discord. Um, so it's kind of cool. There's uh, there's several pieces of uh, there's several things I saw on Discord this week that I hadn't noticed before. Maybe I'm just oblivious, but. Um, there were several games that were coming to Discord first. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? So Discord, with their store, with their game store, they're able to um, they're able to push indie developers to the front. Like, so, so I guess the, uh, the, the game developing community is kind of split right now, especially indie devs, when it comes to Steam. Because a, a, a game that launches on Steam can be review bombed. And then if it's orange, you know, there's like the statistic that people are less likely to even look at the trailer. If they see mixed or negative reviews or whatever, they just, oh, next, next in my queue, what else we got? And uh, Discord, by promoting indie devs, now they're getting eyes on it before there's a potential giant review bomb destroying their game. So, so there, are, there are developers who are putting a game on Discord a week, a month, maybe two months before it even hits Steam. Which is which is pretty cool that and in and, and Discord and, and Steam, they're kinda you can kinda watch what they're doing. Like the Discord main page now looks very steamy. You know what I'm talking about? That yeah. Steam feel? Yeah. Like they went straight for it, like, whoa, what are these guys doing? They're going right after Steam. You know, and it's just uh it's cool to see like Discord, honestly, I feel like it came out of nowhere. Like no one expected Discord to blow up as big as it did. Um, yeah, but but it's cool that Steam finally has a competitor that isn't a a AAA studio trying to, you know, find a way into your pocket. You know, yeah. Where they don't <laughs> where they don't have to give Steam a cut. You know, because that's the big thing. Like they, well, if we sell the game on Steam, we have to give Steam a cut. When well, if we made our own launcher, we could sell our entire Battlefield franchise. You know, it's like, but uh, but anyway, anyone got anything else on that before we go to the next thing? I mean. Um, go- Oh, you, that I've already talked plenty. <laughs> <laughs> back I don't know. I don't know about talking plenty. All right. But that's all right. Well, I think I think Zero is trying to say something. We'll go to Zero, and then we'll come back to Elite. Yeah. All right. Well, going over that Xbox One X deal, I was actually just checking it out just to be curious. Yeah. And they're actually having a special offer where you can get one hundred dollars off. A hundred dollars off the full thing, so it's less than thirty-five dollars a month. Um. Well. The special offer you can get one for three ninety nine. 
Yeah, but that's three ninety nine like out the gate. I don't know if that that applies to the the monthly payment thing. Maybe maybe now you can. I'm not sure. So so this monthly payment thing is it's more like a lease then basically. So you no no no, it. you own it at the end of no. the two years. It's yours. Yeah yeah. So you lease to own it. Zero percent interest. Well, you're, you're financing it. Yeah, with, basically. With zero okay. percent interest. Right. You're not. That's that's technically not financing it. You know, like. Financing okay, it okay, to okay. me. Financing doing, it to me you're means you're doing monthly payments. Yeah, you're doing monthly payments, and it's and it's low. I think the Xbox One S is only twenty two dollars. So like, if you didn't need the four K, and you just wanted the system for the kiddos, twenty two dollars a month. Oh my gosh, that's what crazy. What if I wanted the system for my gaming room, though? Not the kiddos. Like, then you, then the you get the One X. Man. <laughs> it's thirty five for the for the One X. But honestly, it's a, it's a sweet deal. It's just I'm not a, I'm not a huge Xbox guy. I'm really waiting to see what the uh, the keyboard mouse thing that they're talking about with Razer. They're partnering with Razer to do a keyboard mouse approved solution. So if Xbox gets keyboard and mouse for real, then I'm gonna look at this very hard. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be very interesting. All right. So uh, so Elite, you got any final final comments before we move on? Well, actually. Uh... I like that you brought it up, but I guess I want to celebrate a little bit more on that comment that you made that like Steam really didn't have any competitors, uh -huh. at least for the PC market. Is Correct. I mean, I know we mentioned Origin earlier, yeah. but yeah. it's like who uses that? You know, <laughs> and then no people people Origin. in chat their hands slowly go up. Okay, so, so, so <laughs> people that play Sims use Origin. Yes, well, yeah, they do. I mean, I know. Do like, we we like all I, have it installed? Yeah. I have Origins. I have, installed, I have it installed. Anyone have it? I also have it installed. So, so I, I mean, it it's there. It's there, dude. It's little notifications <laughs> are popping up. They're like, where's your wallet, buddy? You know? <laughs> I'll play I mean, Witcher on it. I actually got their um, Origin Access. Oh, see? So how much is Origin uh, Access right now? Um, I believe that's $35 for the year, or at least that's not what I paid. Yeah, nice. And you get all their um, titles. Well, not all of them. You can get the um, Axis Premiere, which then you can get um, their titles as soon as they come out. And sometimes you can actually get them the day before they come out. Right. And then so, you also you also get the the free games that are like, like you were saying uh, earlier, Elite. I don't know if it made it into the live side of the podcast, but you were talking about uh, Throwback Thursday, where you play games that are over eight years old. Like some of the origin titles on there are are fantastic good old games you know oh yep. yeah definitely i mean but like when i was saying like no one really uses origin i mean as in like other than other than like you know like sim city which that's the only really game that i have on origin i don't think i think a lot of people or it doesn't have as much of a share in the market as steam does it's it's kind of like comparing mixer to twitch oh absolutely because like twitch is just Twitch, just like Steam, is just a like a gargantuan in the in their respective markets, and so I mean, yeah, people use Origin, people use Mixer, but it's 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 you know it's not the same population wise, and so that's why I'm really excited to see how Discord's gonna fare against Steam. Well, I think it's gonna fare pretty fairly because when you think about, it, there's more concurrent users on Discord than there is on. Steam. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, I guess I guess for now it's it's the only thing we can do is speculate. Yeah, no, that's true. And um, uh, from the from the group in the, the living room, they said that uh, the origins thing is five ninety nine a month or thirty five free. Yeah, yeah oh, you really? Get, that's... You, you get that cheap cheap thrills yeah. if you pay for the year for sure. That's, that's pretty good. Did. And I mean, there's and almost also, there's almost the battlefield every year, so there's that too. So you get early access guaranteed to the battlefield for the year for thirty five bucks, yeah. which people pay that much to get it anyway. You know, trying to get pre orders and stuff like that, and yeah. Right, yeah, and that's what that's what they're too. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, so that's why I picked it up instead of buying the game. I'm like, oh, I just pay thirty five dollars for the year, and I get play it. that and all the, all the other titles. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's go on, shall we? Sounds good. All right. So another article we've got is uh, the World of Warcraft Classic demo. This is from uh, Eurogamer.net. Um, basically talking a little bit about what you can do 
in this demo. The demo is going to be on the BlizzCon show floor. Uh, this is World of Warcraft Classic Edition, so we're talking uh, OG Warcraft pre all expansions. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit of Barrens, a little bit of like the starter cities and stuff like that. Um, probably doesn't have nearly as many bugs as it did, but at the same time, probably will have a bunch of bugs because <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they lost the source code on this. Like they have committed so many times over that they had to like figure out how they wrote certain things, which is interesting. So, um, so when you do that from scratch again, you definitely introduce bugs and regression bugs thinking, oh yeah, we did this by calling this and then it doesn't work anymore at all. And Hogger killed us. What happened? You know, that sort of thing. But, um, I don't know. I'm kind of excited for it. I still haven't, I still haven't gotten the BlizzCon, uh, virtual ticket. I don't know if anyone is, is getting it or thinking hard about it. Uh, yeah. Firebird's got it. So I got it. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm still on the fence, you know, like they had the WoW, uh, World of Warcraft, um, cloaks that were pretty cool, but I'm not playing WoW right now, so I don't really care. Um, and then they had a very little mini Asmodan pet in Diablo, which is okay. I wasn't too, too thrilled about that either. Um, Diablo is on two, has two main stage events this year though. So I'm really wondering what they're going to announce. So I might just get it. So I don't have the FOMO where I find about, find out about it later on Twitter and I get to watch it live. Um, FOMO, like fear of missing out. Ramblers, <laughs> Ramblers in chat, you looking forward to it now that they aren't making any Diablo 4 announcements? They didn't say that, but I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Diablo 4 hopeful. I know that they, they killed the, um, I know that they killed it by saying, hey, uh, yeah, we want to manage expectations. I know we said we had a bunch of stuff, but some of the stuff isn't even ready yet. Um, I don't know if you guys remember uh, talking seven months ago. Um, there was a uh, on Twitter. There was a there was a tweet from from Diablo or Blizzard. I'm not sure which. And they had a, a nightlight. I wish I, I I should bring it up. But anyway, it was just a nightlight, and it was a Diablo nightlight, and it just said "Sweet Dreams." And then the person turned off the light and turned on the light. And everyone out of that freaked out and said, oh, my God, Diablo's coming to Switch. <laughs> and then and everyone's like, whoa, 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 dial that back. No one said Diablo's coming to Switch. And then Blizzard was like, wow, uh, we were just doing a cute little nightlight, Diablo nightlight. Like, we're not that creative. They freaking lied. Okay, like, that is exactly what they did. They tested the water on Twitter to see what would the response be to Diablo on Switch. So just like that they sent out this video from uh, from Dainty. She's the main community manager from, from Blizzard. She put out this video saying, hey, we're working on a bunch of projects. This is, you know, the Diablo Netflix series. This is uh, Diablo 2 uh, remastered. This is potentially Diablo 4, potentially a Diablo 3 expansion. Like all these things that she didn't say. But some of the things that we've heard about, right? And like we're hard working on multiple projects, and everyone freaked out. And then they sent out another thing later saying, "Oh yeah, curb your enthusiasm," you know. So it's like they're playing with us. All right, I don't know what they're announcing. They're gonna announce something. I don't think it's Diablo Four is off the table. Everyone thinks it is for I some odd reason. Gonna, I think they're just gonna announce calm down, but calm down, calm down. <laughs> I'm calmed down. I'm I'm good. Anyway, you guys are the ones who brought this up. No, Rambler brought this up. This is Rambler's fault. All right. Um. So, what do you guys think about WoW Classic? Back on the <laughs> back on the task at hand. Anyone playing it? Anyone thinking about it? No, I personally, I, I, it's it's not a nice idea. But I don't really know why I would want to go back to Classic. I just bought less content in the game to do is guaranteed to be bugs when you're starting it and honestly it, it just I, I don't know I wouldn't want I'm not a fan of losing progress and going back to square one just seems like it's not worth it to me, but that's just me yeah I'm with you man the game's evolved a lot a lot of the good pieces of the game are things that came after Burning Crusade, you know, like flying mounts. 
not having yeah, like yep. rambler and rambler saying don't you miss ammo pouches yeah like you had to buy ammo you gotta go find your ammo no, vendor no i don't miss that <laughs> i yeah. also don't miss the guild leader giving the one bow that actually had unlimited ammo to Ouch. get to the robes those Ouch. that was <laughs> all right so so anyone got anything else on wild classic and we'll move on to uh to oculus yeah, I've, uh, well, I mean, this was a while back, but I remember actually there being somewhat of a upset from when Blizzard actually did close down all of the... Uh, private servers. Like, yeah, the private, uh, you know, vanilla World of Warcraft servers. Yeah. So I wonder if this is like like an appeal to that fan base that were like basically got, you know, shafted out of, yeah. you know, being able to have their own like private, you know classic world of warcraft and so it's like oh yeah well sorry about that you know here's here's a is it a, it's a remake right or something like that or is this just like a relaunch of the classics version? this is yeah this is a relaunch of classic oh okay yeah yeah when they when they went to court and shut them down it started with an n i don't remember the the name of the uh the private server the big one um but they went after them and uh they shut them down and then everyone said okay cool wow classic confirmed because like, everyone takes like anything that Blizzard does and turns it into like this huge announcement that isn't an announcement. But that's when they started working WoW Classic. They probably but that's in, when they, they come they come pretty close to it. Then. Yeah, but they they invited them to to the Blizzard studio and everything. The the guys who were running that private server to talk to figure out like, hey, we understand you have a community. How do we not destroy our community? How do we not look like the bad guy? You know, and they couldn't talk about a lot of the stuff they talked about. So, you know, a lot of it was just talking around things. But but really, the uh, there is a community out there that wants to play Classic WoW. And if it's working and it's not super bugged like a private server is, where you, where you can vote every day for your favorite private server and then get free gold and stuff like that, it's, like, totally corrupt. You know, it's like, I don't know if anyone's ever played on private servers, but it's pretty freaking corrupt the way that the ad campaign works and gives you, like epic loot for doing nothing but clicking a vote button on four websites you know just to keep them at the top um but yeah actual classic wow if if it doesn't cost 15 dollars a month i could i could definitely look at it if it was like three dollars a month just to play classic wow i don't know that could be that could be something you know yeah 10x yeah. xp rambler you know it man all the all the uh the stuff you had on a private <laughs> server all right go ahead zero um, the only time I've actually played WoW was on, besides the trial, was on a private server. Yeah, so you didn't really see WoW for what it was. There was definitely some glitches, but at the same time, you still got to see what combat was like, what the game was kind of like, and realize, yeah, it's not really a thing, you know? Yeah, and that was only with the what, first three expansions, I believe. Right. And there are always a couple patches behind, or if they have the new expansion, it's completely broke, you know, stuff like that. Right. Alright, cool. Anyone got anything else? No kettlebells? I'm not going to do the kettlebells right now. I'll do the kettlebells after the podcast. But pixels, you have... But there's no kettlebell. Yeah. <laughs> there's no kettlebell. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to talk about Oculus, and then I'll... I'm not going to do kettlebells on the podcast. Nice try, guys. <laughs> they didn't know and had you just done them while they were talking. <sighs> but I don't want to miss what they're saying, man. Alright, let's move on to the next article. So, uh... So Brendan Iribe, or Iribe, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this dude's name. Um, he was one of the co-founders, the original co-founder, of, or the original founder, uh, Palmer Lucky. He ended up leaving Oculus a little while ago for political reasons and all that. I don't know if everyone remembers that happening, but um, Facebook bought Oculus a long time ago, um, and now he's leaving uh, the guy who was the co-founder of Oculus uh, is leaving Facebook. He's like, hey, we're going to go do something else now. You know, um, basically said a whole lot more than that, um, saying that, you know, Facebook obviously has has their eyes set on the future. Um, there is a, a Facebook AR uh, augmented reality glasses kit coming soon. You know, everyone's coming out with one. We got the Microsoft HoloLens Magic Leap just launched stuff starting to get better. Um, the Avigent headset. I don't know if you guys have seen this thing. It's crazy. Like you can actually. You can actually have depth of field in, in augmented reality where you can focus on something in front of you and then the augmented reality objects behind you or behind that object are blurry. Like, it's really starting to, to get better. Eye tracking is becoming a thing. Um, 
but these guys are like the dudes who who started virtual reality for real um in their basement you know building like the oculus dev kits and all that so it's kind of a bummer to see them leaving but um but yeah anyone anyone oculus rift fans or anything like that any any vr fans in the house I mean, I have I have a VR headset, but you know I'm a I'm a uh, HTC Vive man, so I can't really. <laughs> yeah, do you I have the, really Do you have the Vive or the Vive Pro? No, I have I have just the Vive. I uh, you know when I saw how much the Vive Pro was, I was like, ooh. But then I also saw how much the Vive was getting discounted because of the Vive Pro. I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. So I got I got mine. I actually think I saved about like two hundred bucks because of the discount because of Five Pro or yeah Five Pro. So, but um, but in terms of you know aside from that like you know rivalry, I think I think it is pretty uh, pretty sad to see them go because as much as people don't like to think about it, competition is what you know breeds innovation, and so less competition. Uh, or like the less yeah no just the less competition that there is less innovation and so like the minds or the founders behind vr you know leaving facebook i'm kind of concerned about like who's going to be taking over and if you know they even have the same passion or care for vr as you know the original founders yeah the uh the uh regarding competition like the best thing about competition is we always win, you know, as consumers, as, as the people who are, who are adopting the technology, like competition always works out for us. It doesn't work out so good for the companies who are going at each other's throats, stealing each other's technology and patents and stuff like that, but it works out for us. So, um, yeah, that's a good thing. My concern, my concern is if it's going to be like just a fad that's going to slowly die or is it actually going to become an actual thing? It's the it's the stepping stone to AR. So, the more that people keep developing in Unity, and Unity gets stronger and stronger into the uh, into the VR presence, um, and AR hardware, uh, augmented reality hardware is getting smaller and smaller, uh, faster and faster. So soon, um, like this year, um, the the Oculus Quest is coming out, which we talked about previously on one of the podcasts, but um, I mean, we're talking computer free six degrees of freedom. Um, so you can move around in a room. This isn't, this isn't a Samsung gear VR or anything like that. This is uh this is significant um, immersion. Um, once they, once they keep doing this and keep iterating, um, <laughs> uh, once they keep keep doing this, AR is gonna get better and better to the point where, like, people had no idea we would be on our phones as much as we are right now, and we're gonna just be on glasses. We're just gonna have pretty stylish glasses or you know laser projection into our into our retinas. You know, like the, we don't even have glasses. We can just have the bar across our forehead that's just projecting the weather and the notifications and the Discord links and all that stuff. You know, like it'll, it'll be a thing. So basically, we're gonna turn in a thing for Molly then. Yeah, yeah. Or like basically. all like fat people on the on the spaceship waiting yeah, for their. There's there's, weeks, there's weeks. truth there's truth in all fiction, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> not not agree not disagreeing with you. Yep. All right, cool. Anyone got anything else on that? Curbs or uh, zero? Um, I think, like you said, competition produces. Uh, progress on both sides so kind of in relation to that they have said facebook has said that they're not going to completely stop working on the rift or vr in general and that they definitely do have plans for it so yeah. i think that'll continue and help there we're jamming now someone got an important phone call <laughs> all right um all right, cool. Uh, Zero, you got anything before we move on? Um, I just, I hope that HTC Vive still has the competition against Oculus, and hopefully they can still compete against them. Because I really like what um, Elite said about, you know, I think with competition 
there's going to be a lot of innovation. I mean, just think of Samsung and Apple going against each other, and Xbox and PlayStation. I just think competition's a good thing. Yeah, there's more than just Rift and Vive in this whole thing. Windows Mixed Reality came out. They came out with headsets that have a just a standard Windows deal. And then later, after they fully launched, they had Steam integration. So the same apps work on the Windows headset I have over on the in the corner as they do on, on the Vive. It's the exact same thing. The controllers are almost identical. Like There's a lot of different competitors coming out with different stuff. Uh, we have the Pimax. There's, they're a Chinese company with an 8K... Uh, VR headset that has a a field of view that is nearly identical to human vision. So all that immersion of like staring down a couple big straws in in the Vive is going to be completely completely blown apart. People are people are freaking out when they put on the Pimax. Um, so there's still people, other companies outside of Oculus pushing. Even if Facebook just somehow doesn't get the right people lined up in this, and then they don't. Uh, they don't create anything anymore and Facebook just kind of tanks their VR division. There's enough other companies that are going to keep pushing it forward. All right, cool with that. Let's talk about um, some new media stuff. So anyone watching uh, Netflix Marvel stuff? Anyone watching the new Daredevil season maybe? I'm actually going to I'm actually going to stay out of this round because <laughs> I don't actually use Netflix all that much, so yeah, y'all fine. have the floor. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> I actually don't watch uh, TV shows of any sort, so. And that's cool too. This is this is I, all part of the new media talk too. So like this is not TV, quite TV, you know. And then streaming is like also not at all TV. <laughs> so this is why we kind of talk about this because it's interesting to see how how people are changing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd say um, my wife and I we haven't watched we haven't started it on watching it yet, but we have it in our watch list. That so, with all the other Marvel films. Yeah, so you've watched like season one and two of Daredevil, maybe some of Luke Cage, maybe Iron Fist, maybe Jessica Jones, maybe Defenders. Anyone watched any of those? I've seen some of them. I haven't started uh, uh, Daredevil, but I have seen some of Doomfist, some of Luke Cage. Seen I've seen a few of them. They're... Uh, hmm. Yeah, so so Netflix is Netflix Netflix has their own sliver of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Marvel Netflix universe. So a couple of references to like big Marvel movies, but not anything more than, hey, here's the Avengers Tower and hey, you're in New York where the attack happened and stuff like that. Um so they're they're doing what they can with a couple you know, definitely B list or lower heroes, maybe C list heroes, um, when we're talking big time comics. Um, the Avengers even kind of dip into some B list, but uh, but yeah, so they're they had a bunch of uh, of stuff planned for this, and uh, it looks like they're canceling each show one by one. So um, Iron Fist got got canceled. Luke Cage also came out the following week as being canceled. Um, I I never even watched Jessica Jones, so I'm I'm thinking that that one's probably gonna, gonna get canceled as well. There just wasn't anything too compelling there for me anyway. Um, but Daredevil, I, I, I think Daredevil can stand alone. You know, I don't even think it needs anything else. I think they do a, a fantastic job with, with one shot fight scenes that I absolutely love where the camera just rolls and there's some, there's some like, I don't know. It reminds me of like the third round of a UFC match where everyone's just trying to like recover stamina and still give a hundred percent like it just feels like that in daredevil sometimes where he's just whooped but he's still like going toe to toe and the camera like never stopped and uh so so there's some really cool scenes there and they do excellent excellent uh villain development as well um but the other the other stories iron fist was kind of lacking people were really ticked about casting initially on that um luke cage i enjoyed i haven't finished season two yet but um but yeah, so this is this is interesting. They they had a, a whole lot of plans, way bigger than all of this. I think maybe some of this might have to do with the just Disney um, really owning Marvel and not and starting its own streaming service and trying to be like, you know, maybe we should just stop with this Marvel on the Netflix thing, you know, on the big red. Just go away and start thinking about Marvel shows that will be on the Disney streaming service. So. Which again is new media, so 
I don't know if we'll get a Disney subscription um, when they have a when they have a service, but uh, but it's coming soon, you know. And uh, Rambler Rambler is binging the haunting of Hill House right now, which is like a huge Halloween uh, perfect timing to watch the show. I guess I don't really watch the thriller horror stuff, but people are freaking out about that right now on Netflix. Uh, go ahead, whoever is uh, about to talk. I think. I enjoyed Luke Cage for the most part. I didn't actually finish it, but at the very least for Iron Fist, I think they canceled it just because it was bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I thought like, the, I thought Defenders was pretty good, but I was like hungry for Daredevil <laughs> the whole time and Daredevil was right. in there, so I was like, oh, "Okay, cool. This will get me through it." While I'm waiting for season 3, you know. But um Hey Curbs, how bad? It the only Okay. The only fight scene there is, and this happens multiple times, the only fight scene there really is, is this dude holding his glowing fist and then throwing some flimsy looking punch and, and then it's over. That's the only action yeah, behind and, a hero that is supposed walls, to. Yeah, walls explode, cars explode. Uh, uh, it's just, that's it, man. It's, You're right. Yeah, it, that's all it is. Not to mention the writing's not exactly very good either, but. Anyway, yeah, so I, it's just, it's really, really bad. All right. I so... regret spending the time it took <laughs> to watch even the first season on it. All right, all right. I thought, I thought the first season was, was okay. It was okay. I mean, I, I, I think it could have been spent watching something else. I'm with you. I'm with you. But it was, it was okay at the time. I'll say okay. Like a five out of ten. All right, I'm not going to give it a lot. I don't know about that. I don't know. I feel I, like I don't stretching. Watch it, but... I'm surprised that Curbs stopped at such a short rant. No, oh, he's doing great. Good job, Curbs. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> no, no, we're I good. can keep nope, going. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> we we have we have a hard cutoff. We're we're already at midnight, so we got to wrap it up quick. But so let's Can move on. Let's move that. on to the next article. Um, all right. So uh, this is a side article that I threw into the mix, so we don't have to talk about it too much. I really want to talk about the mixer announcement that they're. Uh, I'd like to speculate on it because I don't think anyone can really talk about what it is yet, but I'd like to speculate. Um, but yeah, the uh, TwitchCon is going on and uh, they're announcing things, you know, doing their little TwitchCon, key- uh, TwitchCon keynote. So the CEO of Twitch announced uh, basically uh, what we already have at Mixer, which is co-streaming. They call it uh, Squad Stream. So there you go. That's cool. And then a couple things. Um, there was a uh, there's another announcement on Twitch Rivals, which is basically like uh, their competitive side. Which I, I like this idea. Basically, um, if two streamers are in the same game, uh, either Twitch can discover it or someone else can discover it and say, "Hey, these two streamers are going after each other," and then it'll actually like not sync the streams, but it'll let everyone know, like, "Hey, you can go check out this dude's channel." He's actually in the same match as him, which is really cool. I like I like that idea. Um, and uh, then there was some stuff about uh, modding, so some extra power for mods where they they can, you know, a person can walk into a channel and just start blowing up your channel, you know, while you're streaming. And you're like, dude, where'd this guy come from? Like, what is his problem with life? You know, and uh, and sometimes you you just kind of want to like smash him and and ban him and mute him or whatever. Um, but you can actually click a user. This is what they're going to be doing. They're going to have you be able to click the user and just see, one, how long their their account's been active. If it's been active for a day, you know it's a throwaway and the guy's totally messing with you. Um, if it's older than that, you're like, okay, cool, maybe he's something else. You can look up all the messages he's ever said in that channel. And if you're a mod on any other channels, something about being able to see what he says on other channels. So you can kind of see if he's just toxic all the way through or if he's just you know, ripping on your stream or your friend's stream. So I like I like some of those those ideas. That's cool. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'm not on Twitch at the moment, so I, I I don't know if I'm excited that Twitch is getting it. I just like we were talking earlier about competition. When people have an idea like Mixer has co streams and Twitch is like, wow, that is a good idea, let's do that. And then we start seeing mod capabilities and, and being able to sync streams across uh the service. I th- I think that's it's got a lot of potential. Anyone uh, got any opinion on this? I uh, sorry. Go. No, no, you can go. You can go, Serbs. You can go, Serbs. Uh, 
I just want to know what exactly the difference is, because Mixer has the multi-stream, but Twitch also has a multi-stream uh, that you can do already, where you can have your four streams up at a time. I just I want to know, besides the quad capability, I guess, which I thought they already had, but uh, and the linking between and the plat the platform, what what exactly the difference is because they already have a multi screen feature. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. It's a good question. Maybe they're promoting more low cut t shirts. I don't. Know. Oh my gosh! <laughs> there you go, there you go, Iman. All right, what you got, Elite? <laughs> oh no, I just I was just gonna say like, I at least for just this article. It would just be reiteration of, like what you said and what I said. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, competition it breeds innovation, and I'm actually like, I didn't I didn't read this article. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a blind yeah. article. No one even knew I was bringing this article in. So sorry about uh, that, guys. Okay. No worries. In fact, I I actually would have probably like linked a a tweet on that, and I'll actually get into that a little bit later. But yeah, no, like I I'd love to see that uh, feature on a. Uh, on mixer because um i remember back when my buddy would stream on mixer uh there was like this one time where uh we we found out that uh someone in his match was also streaming and so we mm -hmm. went ahead and sent him some mixer love and you know that that guy was that guy was like the lady he's like oh my gosh i i didn't even know i was you know in a yeah in a match with another streamer that's awesome but th so, this has happened this has happened on twitch for a long time like people have have spawned communities off of larger streamers just because they like there's I guess there's a guy who runs uh vehicles to streamers in Fortnite. And he's like the vehicle runner guy. And he'll find streamers on the map and he'll give them a vehicle and then he'll like just suicide himself. Or just get shot on purpose. Oh really? And, and that, that that's just he's like something delivery service or something like that. And his channel freaking exploded because he kept on delivering, he kept on stream sniping, but delivering vehicles to these big streamers, you know, so they could get around the map or whatever. It's just like, what the heck? But to be able to to link this together without people um, doing the link, let the service itself know that, wow, these guys are basically on the same map. The game started at the same time. This is 66 left. This is 66 left. Is this the same game? You know, like like with uh, with Hype Zone. There's ways to read the screen uh, using OCR. Yeah, like a suicide valet, exactly, Rambler. Um, it can use OCR, it can read the screen, it can see what's going on, and if you take that data and build a way to network the service that hasn't existed before, that, that's, that's, that's a solid idea. Yep. All right, cool. So let's, uh, let's move on to the final article. Anyone got anything left on TwitchCon? Oh, well, I was just going to oh, add go something... Oh, that ahead. I saw earlier today, and it was like, it was funny because uh, like Twitter was getting all upset, and you know it was it was pretty reasonable as to why, but um, I think I, I can't remember what it was, but like I guess it was like Twitch devs, and they were like one of them mentioned like, oh how cool would it be, you know, if Twitch had a dating app part to it, and and yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's gonna be horrible. Because, oh man, that is that sounds bad. Because like, I mean, good intentions, but naivety at it. Because, like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not on Twitch, but I know that there's a good amount of like sexual harassment that, uh, that yeah. you know, female streamers get, and and it's also here on Mixer too. And I, I'd imagine just like having a dating app on a Twitch would just like make that problem worse. Yeah, it would, it would probably it, get like a thousand times worse, honestly. It would have to be it would have to be like opt in. And it would have to be at the at you know, like most I guess like most dating apps it'd probably be like a thousand to one, you know, guys to girls or whatever the ratio is, you know, like it'd be like this huge lopsided thing where it was just like, Oh, this isn't working. This is a terrible idea. But I'm sure they they would try to get they'd opt in single streamers, they'd say, Hey, we'll promote you for this much time on the front page if you opt in, you know, just so you can see that the service is a thing. But yeah, I mean, people are, uh, people do some, the devs do some weird things. It's not just Twitch devs. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but Facebook 
right now, I, I don't know if anyone uses Facebook, but Facebook right now, there's like 10,000 different versions of Facebook running at any moment. Like, if I went on to Facebook right now, I would see a different version of Facebook than you guys would see, more than likely, because of my demographic, because of my computer, because of my location. They run different versions of Facebook to different people. They take a, uh, as a developer on Facebook, you can actually, and this is very unique to, to other websites or services, but you can say, hey, I want to do something that involves uh, single guys from age 25 to 35, and I want to change the timeline so it looks like this instead. And they say, yeah, sure, go ahead. It doesn't affect their users at all. Go ahead and do that. And then they run the test for a week. You see as a single 25 to 35-year-old man, you see a different timeline. You're like, that's kind of weird. Or maybe different po different posts are promoted. And then a week later, it'll go back to something else, some other version or what it was. you know. And it's just like, their devs are specifically like doing big data decisions, like big data analytics, trying to find what drives people's website traffic, what makes them click, what makes them stay. And, uh, and Twitch and Mixer, they need to, to really figure out like, what is, what is more, more of this information, you know, if they really want to keep their presence high and Mixer really needs to work on it. Like that something about, I know they're, they're they're like a dwarf in this, you know, just they're so small in comparison to I think the resources and all that. Uh, they did a great job doing FTL and their, their FTL is still faster than Twitch low latency. I was testing it. It's it's completely we're we're talking at least 2 seconds, you know, like the internet is faster than than 2 seconds, you know, like the internet works way better than this in 2018. But um but yeah, so uh so that's all I've got on that. I'm just kind of rambling, sorry guys. No problem. <laughs> Maybe that's what uh, that's what a uh, Twitch's uh, multicast is going to do. It's going to increase the two seconds to four seconds. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and then they'll be back where they were. All right. Um, so let's let's go on to the last uh, last bit. This is the uh, the mixer tweet that came out um, yesterday morning. No, yeah, yesterday morning. Um, basically, just this uh, crystal zooms in. The crystal has a spark icon on it. And then it says the number two, and it says coming soon. And the mixer uh, profile pic changed more from this uh, blue and white X to a blue and white X with this uh, circular spherical color changing thing going on. So, uh, so what is it? What do you guys think? I mean, I I mean this is this is. If anything, if, if of all the things on the podcast, I think this is a, like the most speculative. But mm -hmm. I I wonder if I wonder if uh, maybe Mixer is trying to see if they can get something as like kind of like bits that Twitch yeah. has. Yeah. Because I mean, for the longest time we've had Sparks, and the only thing we can really do is use it on interactive. But yep. imagine if imagine if we could uh, imagine if Sparks we could also use as like bits. That way, it's like a it's like a a safe way to like sponsor streamers without having them to worry about like chargebacks and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, because that's one of the things about bits um, that you can't charge back bits. I guess that's that's one of the best parts about Twitch bits. Um, if you do a Streamlabs donation, you can cancel that, and then the streamer has to pay chargebacks because the money disappeared or whatever. But um, but yeah, there's something coming with Sparks. Um, even even Matt. Uh, one of the lead developers for Mixer, you know, Matt and James back in the day, they made Mixer or made Beam. Uh, Matt was talking on the Mixer Discord a while ago saying, hold on to your Sparks. Something's coming. And then this happened. Yeah. So so there is something with Sparks. I mean, we even see the Spark icon there, like the Spark uh, logo thing on the uh, on the crystal. We see another Spark behind that. So there's something coming. Um It'd be really cool. Like someone was like, "Oh, great, we're gonna buy Sparks now." Microsoft. This is how Microsoft's gonna make money. But it's like, I don't. I don't think that's that's it. I think there's something way more than that. I would agree with you on that one. I think it's gonna be like a uh, 2.0 mixer 2.0. Okay, they've they've kind of <laughs> they've kind of already done that. Well, then it's gonna be 2.5 then. Um, well, but it said two. <laughs> yeah, but like well, it could be mixer two. Or Electric mixer, boom, like that, you know, just like make a like mixer, mixer like movie sequel that actually 
it's it's like that it's like that stupid joke where it's like oh yeah if mixer's so great where's mixer two yeah and they're like it's right here <laughs> boom drop the mic you know <laughs> no there's it's also just sparks 2.0 yeah they're, but they're, uh <laughs> mixer squared rambling nice but uh pixel i'm gonna need to ask you to uh, return all those sparks i spent nope and those sparks went into the uh the pixel arcade spark bank sorry man Come on, man. At least, at least, at least, I, at least I use ten thousand every couple of weeks or so in your thing. Yeah, elite. I, I, I found a way to to suck the sparks out of my community with the arcade oh, really? game. Yeah, I'll have to show it to you sometime. It's great. Hey, wait. Does it like? <laughs> does it actually give you sparks, or is it like? Yeah, it's just like it. Oh, uh... dude! Like you can't do this right now. <sighs> no, you guys oh, can't do man. this. Right? Oh man! I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. great great so we'll do that later thanks Simon. i don't even have that scene set up anymore i need to i know uh, you broke it last time let me see, let me see i'm not worried about it. yeah i don't know i don't know if it works or not um no nope. i just wanted to throw sparks at you <laughs> yeah thanks dude so that was another 10k i appreciate it man um but yeah you can look at the uh i guess some people don't know that you can see the sparks and see how many sparks people spent have you ever looked at the uh the interactive logs Elite. No, I have not. Yeah, so I'll shoot. I'll shoot you a link. I was talking to a couple other, other people. They were even partners and had no idea that sparks were actually tracked. So you can see like how many times people interact with your stuff, how much sparks you gain at different times, like all that stuff. Kind of, it's almost better, better stream statistics than the stream statistics that they give you. The analytics, oh, yeah. like the analytics, are like ouch. You know, I guess Twitch analytics are way better, but um, but the uh the interactive analytics are actually pretty solid. Like they show exactly like which games, like which interactive board was using, was getting a lot of, uh, a lot of attention from viewers and all that. So, um, kind of interesting, but yeah, like your, uh, your interactive for, uh, League of Legends gets more than the, uh, absolutely. Fort Cause people really hate Fortnite. At least in my channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. They're like, no, I'll never click that game. It's like, ah, oh, okay. Well, that wasn't my intention. It was kind of a, a trolley way to play in Fortnite. But okay, you don't have to click it. It's fine. I, I know. I told my community members, I'm like, you'll never see me playing Fortnite. <laughs> and then, and then like, and then that whole thing where it's like, oh yeah, we're hosting tournaments. Uh, you know, you could walk away with ten thousand dollars. I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to, I need to draw back a little bit. I will play Fortnite for large amounts of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still wouldn't play. Yeah, I'm not gonna win, so I'm not gonna play. You know, like that's that's my thought. But but maybe yeah. maybe you're good at Fortnite. Even if I, don't I know, could man. win, even if I could win, I wouldn't want to play. Understood. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Just, I mean, but like, I could use ten thousand dollars. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, you could also buy a lotto ticket. No. Make a million. Oh yeah, but I mean the odds or the odds are a lot smaller on a tournament than they are on yeah. a lotto ticket. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, not, not and, necessarily because all the best players are trying for the same ten k as you. Yeah, but you can yeah, still get some cheap shots. You know, people is going to be less. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a solid thing. I mean, if you want to if you want to chase tournament money and like there's no tournament entry fee, it's like yeah, why not? Why not play at least a lottery ticket? You have to buy. Like I don't want to buy a lottery ticket, I, but if I yeah. found a lottery ticket on the ground, yeah, I'll check the numbers that night. But I'm not gonna buy a lottery ticket. You know, like that's just my <laughs> my thoughts. But I'm, oh look, there's a lottery ticket. Oh, it's a scratch when off. Oh man, I didn't even finish the, scratching uh... it off. You know, it's like heck yeah, I'll scratch it off. When he's working at the gas station, every time somebody screwed up a lottery ticket, we just take it home after. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. Um, that that's interesting. Maybe I'll maybe I'll delete that. <laughs> oh, it was it, it, it just paid for. It comes out of our check anyway. So. Uh, okay, okay, got it, got it. All right. Um, so with that, I think I think we can uh, we can wrap it up. Sound good, guys? I can do a last little bit here. If anyone's got anything else. No, I'm 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 good. All right. Cool. All right, I'm good, man. Uh, zero. I'm good as well. Curves. All good. All right, sweet. All right, so thanks so much for everyone for uh, thanks so much to everyone for coming by tonight, uh, hanging out with us. Uh, thanks so much for the active chat. Thanks, Rambler, for throwing your your thoughts in there. Uh, we'll definitely get you on the live side of this sometime. Um, really appreciate you hanging out. 
Um, thanks so much for the host earlier, uh, Elite, bringing over the guys and uh, and getting your community over here and kind of getting hyped up for the podcast. I totally appreciate that. Uh, Definitely, man. So, Definitely. So, so typically at the end of the stream, or at the end of the uh, podcast, rather, I do a, uh, a streamer shout out. Uh, so this one this week is definitely, uh, elite. So, um, can you give me your full mixer link? Elite? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, mixer.com slash the elusive elite, no spaces. Awesome. And as you heard earlier, he plays, you know, basically it's a, it's a halo based name. So he's probably, you know, freaking awesome at halo. Um, so if you, if you like that at all, definitely, uh, definitely go follow him over on mixer. Um, also on uh, Twitter, you're on Twitter too, right? Yep. And what's um, your at? My my Twitter handle is uh, Elusive Elite Mix. All right, cool. Uh, I I wish it could be the Elusive Elite, but uh, there's there's a, there's a story behind that. So <laughs> <laughs> another time, then. Cool. Another time. All right, and then uh, yeah, so so definitely uh, definitely give him a follow. Definitely uh, you know swing by his channel at some point and uh see what he's playing especially on thursdays doing the throwback stuff i'm all about that that's exciting i don't even stream on thursdays so i might even be uh doing some uh watching slash lurking now that i know you're doing that so that's cool i like to support that kind of oh, stuff i need the uh basically should throw us a link in the uh chat there. i mean if it's if it's fine with you pixel yeah dude yeah i, I appreciate that i mean you know it's I, I was, I, it was, it was, uh, I remember one night I was like kind of a little bit ranty, but also like joking with my community. I'm like, okay guys. Uh, because I was, I, I, I was like, I asked about like partnership viewer, you know, averages and they, you know, they didn't really give me a clear answer. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to have like view or how are they supposed to have viewer averages for like someone who like plays Pokemon leaf green, like, <laughs> Who who on Mixer regularly streams that other than like me and like a small handful of people? Yeah. So. Yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah. yeah, and that's that's the thing, you know, in regards to uh, to Mixer partnership and stuff. We can talk about that offline, but I mean, there's nothing. There's no uh, there's no consequence for applying for partnership, and just see what they say you need to work on. I mean, if anything, it's a way to get some feedback from the platform that you're pursuing partnership on. I mean, if, if they don't give you feedback, you'd be like, all right, cool. Do I even want to be partnered on your platform? If you're not going to tell me what I could do better or what you're actually looking for. So, uh, there's people who've been denied like four or five times before they finally get it. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, figuring out and, and their, their requirements, you know, you've seen it over the last, uh, eight months, their requirements have changed a couple times. So, um, yeah. But yeah, and and streaming and streaming Pokemon on Mixer, like that's a straight up good idea, dude. I was streaming like, Pokemon on Mixer. <laughs> there's there's not a lot of Pokemon streams on Mixer, and there's a lot of Pokemon fans in this world. So, uh, so yeah. it's definitely definitely a good idea. All right, cool. So with that, um, thanks everyone for uh, for tuning in, um, for tuning in live at Mixer, uh, for checking out the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll upload that here soon. We're also on Anchor. Uh, .fm slash Pixels Get Me. Um, all these things. Uh, if you if you're listening to this, you you know how to find it already. Um, but just let you know, it's kind of out in a couple different directions. So thanks again. If you see it out there on Twitter, thanks for the the likes and the retweets. If you see it out on YouTube, thanks for the comments and the likes. If you see it over at uh, Anchor, you can do applause or you can just reshare it and stuff like that. Tell people about it. We'll keep doing it. Um, if you're interested in being on the podcast, just let me know. Uh, you can swing by the Mixer channel or uh, at Pixels Get Me on on Twitter, and we can we can talk. We can get you in, uh, get your opinions voiced, and uh, and then you know you get to shout out your stuff too. So it's always nice just promoting everybody. Um, and then finally, a uh, shout out to the Breath of Variety stream team. Um, me, Zero, uh, the Elusive Elite, we're all on there. Um, definitely a good stream team that covers uh mixer and twitch uh doing a, a variety of games not just fortnite and PUBG and red dead but other stuff too so um definitely uh definitely check them out there's always something that they're uh they're doing that's very different so uh so definitely look around for those guys and then um and then next week iman is going to broadcast this out in the community which is fantastic 
I appreciate that, dude. All right, with that, I'm going to end this. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out. We'll see you next time.